playing? We're gonna do the Battle Hymn of the Republic, okay? And I'll, I'll give you a little rhythm here and you can come in when you want. Kind of like a, you know, just a thump, a thump, kind of a march thing, okay? Um, hello everyone, uh, we're recording. We're at the Chelsea Soldier Home and I'm Chaplain Toby Quirk and we're putting this on YouTube. So the YouTube channel is easy to find. It's, um, you go to YouTube and you do a search. And in the search you go CHS, for Ch or CSH, CSH for Chelsea Soldier Home, Space Chapel. CSH Chapel, and then I've got a bunch of little things on there, but this will be on there. This will be the featured recording for that. So what we do is we, uh, we kind of go back to uh, grammar school. And uh, remember in grammar school how you did the Pledge of Allegiance? Then you sang a patriotic song and then you did the Lord's Prayer, right? You're not old enough for that. Yeah. So we're going to do that. And you can stay seated, but, uh, well, for the Pledge of Allegiance, if you can stand, let's do that. There's a flag over there. It's off camera, but it's right there. So I pledge allegiance to the flag the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. You can sit down if you want. So we'll do the Battle Hymn of the Republic, key of G. And here's the rhythm, Bob, here we go. actually stop that you know where we went we did in the morning right first thing you did pledge of allegiance patriotic song and then you did the the lord's prayer i think we used to do that in catholic school probably. yeah catholic school they can do that forever but public school they said it was against the law <laughs> so let's uh, join together with the lord's prayer our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. In temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And everyone said, Amen. 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 All right. 
So, we're talking about freedom this month. I don't know why. Actually, I was wondering about if we should continue this, right? And the point I'm gonna make all through this little talk is that freedom doesn't come from our external situation. It comes from inside. And as we're close to the Lord, we have a, a much more powerful uh, strength to have that internal freedom than just if you're trying to do it yourself. Now, some people have that strength to be free, to be strong, no matter what the situation. But when you have this indwelling of God, you have it even stronger. So I wasn't going to talk about that. But I was sitting out in front, and a security guard walked up. Nice young fellow, had a conversation. I said, how are you doing? He says, well, he says, since I have the Lord inside me, I have the strength <laughs> to deal with all the situations outside of me. I said, thank you for saying that, because <laughs> I wasn't sure where I was supposed to go with this. So that's nice to have that external kind of work. Okay, so uh, where am I going to go with this? Where am I going to start? Where does your freedom live? So in case you fall asleep between now and when I get to the answer, the answer is it lives in our hearts by the presence of Jesus Christ in us. That's where freedom really lives. And we can be confined in all kinds of ways, all kinds of situations, but with God inside of us, there is a freedom. How many of you remember Tozy? Right, everybody remembers Tozy, yeah. He was one of our favorite guys. And if anybody is confined or would be confined, it would be Tozy, right, Charles? I mean, he had no legs, as I recall. He was in a wheelchair over in Quigley. And, and, and the only way they could move him was to put one of those, you know, lifts underneath him and move him this way into the bed and out of the, into the wheelchair. So that was, there was no freedom there from anybody's viewpoint. <laughs> but if you ask Tozy, how are you doing? What was his answer 100% of the time? How are you doing, Tozy? You go, better than most. <laughs> that was an attitude. And he was a faithful guy with the chapel, loved the Lord. In fact, uh, anything that I gave out during the chapel, he would pin it up on his bulletin board behind. So he was kind of like, you know, extending the message from what we talked about on Sunday to, to the ward. So, to me, that's proof positive that freedom doesn't come necessarily from your situation, your confinement, you know, uh, your pressure. It comes from within. I'm going to talk about Joshua the warrior. Um, I suppose it's no surprise that so many times the Bible talks about warfare, about soldiers, about war, and being a military guy, I'm attracted to that, so I've been studying Joshua, he's a great warrior. And he came to a point early in his career as the leader of Israel of uncertainty and, and being and wondering what's gonna happen next. And when you're uncertain and you don't know what's happening next, there's this powerlessness, you know, this feeling of sort of helplessness coming on. So here's his situation. He, he, he had come across the Jordan River with all these Israelites, about three million of them. Yeah, three million of them. And about 50,000 of them were warriors. And he was given a mission of taking the city, fortified city with a huge wall around it, with no siege equipment and no engineering experience, and the wall was big enough to actually live in. There were homes in this wall. Jericho is the name of the city. It had never, ever been taken before. It was impregnable, and yet he was given a mission with this brand new army to attack it and take it. So he's responsible for the lives of 50,000 warriors. And this is really a suicide mission. He, he was bothered. He was uncertain. And when you come to a point of uncertainty and powerlessness, that's a confinement. That's kind of like being in this emotional prison where there doesn't seem to be any escape. So in the book of Joshua, 
chapter 5, verse, uh, I think it's 13 through 15. And I've got a little graphic here. It could have looked like this. Maybe, maybe not. Give you something to concentrate on. Joshua chapter 5, verse 13 says this. <clears throat> when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua approached him and said, are you for us or for our enemies? So this is kind of a depiction, not sure how accurate it might be, but this may have been the image of this man that he confronted, a fierce, powerful, looked like a man. We're gonna find out who it was here in a minute. Are you for us or for our enemies? Neither, he replied. I have now come, commander of the Lord's army. Then Joshua bowed down his face to the ground and worshiped and asked him, what does my Lord want to say to his servant? The commander of the Lord's army said to him, remove your sandals from your feet for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did that. All the evidence from this account point to the fact that this warrior that Joshua confronted was actually the Lord Jesus Christ manifest in the Old Testament. It's called a Christophany, if you've studied this kind of stuff. The reason is, if it's an angel, an angel never allowed a human being to worship him. And if it's a man, you don't worship a man, but, but this manifestation of this warrior with a drawn sword he allowed Joshua to worship him, and he said, take off your sandals because the place you're standing is holy. There's only one other time that God ever said that. Take off your sandals for the ground is holy, and that was the burning bush with Moses. So it's a very strong evidence that this is, uh, come on in, Dan, that this is uh, the Lord Jesus Christ manifest. Now, Joshua, as I said, was uncertain and he was wrapped up in, in doubt and probably in uh, brokenness, wondering, and powerlessness. When you're uncertain, when you don't know what's coming next, there's a sense of powerlessness. And as you know, as military people, we're used to trying to fix stuff. That's what we've always done. That's why we joined the military. It's like firemen and police officers. They're the type of people that jump in and it, you know, they're used to having a certain amount of control over the situation. And if they have chaos, they bring chaos into control. That's what they do, that's what we do. So Joshua's a warrior, but he's got no clue of how this is gonna happen. So he's in this emotional prison of powerlessness and wondering and uncertainty. So he asks the question, what does my Lord have to say to his servant? So here's what I'm getting to. In a situation where you don't have control, one of the best things that can release you from that emotional bondage, that emotional prison, is having a job to do. Having to do something, okay? And listen, because you know how it is. If you're working for a commander that you can trust, a good man, a good woman who, who has their act together, they're not self-serving, they care about their troops, they care about the mission, and they give you a mission, it's very comforting, isn't it? Right? Uh, your parents, those of you who are brought up in a fairly secure home, I mean, none of us have perfect parents, I certainly didn't. But if I'm wandering around doing stuff, you know, like, has anybody run away from home? as a kid, <laughs> yeah, I know, <laughs> it's a great thing to do, right? So or you get all upset with your parents and everything and this house isn't any good for me, you pack a bag or something, you wander off, and after a while you go, hmm, what am I gonna eat, <laughs> you know, where am I gonna sleep? And so somebody grabs you and you realize that your parents, when they tell you to do something, when they give you an assignment, having an assignment from somebody who you respect, who's a noble person, is very liberating. So what Joshua is doing here, he turns to this warrior who he realizes is actually the son of God, and he says, what 
does my Lord have to say to his servant? Now this does three things. Number one, it sets up the relationship. You're the Lord, I'm the servant. That's nice to know, right? And then he wants to know what to do, right? What does my Lord have to say to his servant? And the third thing is, he's expecting an answer. Now there's an old saying, it's not true, but it's an old saying trying to be humorous. It says, when you pray to God, that means you're religious. But if you hear him answer, that means you're crazy. But I don't believe that. I know that God responds to us. Now we might not hear him with our ears and with our brains, but if we truly ask God a question and, and, and we're devoted to him in our asking, he speaks to our soul. And it's like having a separate receiver. You know, you got an AM, FM receiver up here at your brain. So any frequency that comes into that area, you turn that on and you set the frequency and it comes in there, the brain. Then you've got this other receiver that comes in on say microwave or, or something like that, the internet, and that's down here in your gut, in your soul. And God speaks to that. And you don't always understand what it is in your brain. What does my Lord have to say to his servant? Ask him the question, you wait for the answer. The answer comes. And you don't know what it is, but you trust that he's answered and he's given you a direction so you march through your day. And you know that during that day, you're doing what he's told you to say. Shake your head so I can hear your brains rattling. Make sense? All right. So I'm gonna tell you what I do every day. Very personal. I think I've been doing it for about five or six years, I don't know. Every day. First thing I do when I get up in the morning, <clears throat> and I, I record this in my journal too, so I kind of keep track. It's a, accountability thing so I don't miss a day. So I can look back and say, yep, I did it, I did it, I did it. I place myself in the position of attention. Now, we've all been instructed in the position of attention, right? Some more than others. Um, I, I was at West Point for four years, and every day we had at least four formations where we had to come to a position of attention. We had Reveille, we had breakfast, lunch, and supper. And often we had to march to like intramural athletics or parade practice. And we marched to chapel. We had a chapel formation. So I came to attention a lot. And I've got this position embedded in my head. So it's very detailed. So the first thing you do is you put your heels together and your toes apart. You have your hand loosely cupped and your thumb pointed downward behind the seams of your trousers. You have your stomach in, your chest out, and your face to the front, and your eyes on the senior person who's in charge of the formation. It's called a position of attention because everything you have is attending to the person who's talking. Your eyes are looking at him, your ears are listening to him, your brain is engaged in what he's saying, your whole body is fixated just on the captain or the first sergeant who was ever in charge of the formation and you're standing and you can't move, and you're not allowed to look around, you're at attention. So, my meditation position, and I don't meditate long, maybe two, three, four minutes, is the position of attention. Certain time in the morning, I come to formation and I've got my senior commander standing there just like Joshua had this magnificent commander of the army of the Lord in front of him. And I put my heels together, toes apart, thumbs along the seat, my trousers, stomach ends, chest out, my VD bubble eyes on my commander, and I ask him that question. I say, what does, my, what does my Lord have to say to his servant? And I wait. And I wait. And then I have this so the spiritual understanding that he's spoken to my heart. Then I go about my day. Now the other thing that I do, and Catfish knows this because he was a ranger guy, ranger student and instructor. Uh, in ranger school, they didn't care <laughs> what the weather was. If it was a formation, you're gonna form up. And I don't know how they figured this out, but it seemed like at least more than half the times that we had formation, it rained. I think they were in control of that somehow right? So 
we would stand at attention in the rain, have fatigues on, you know, and the guy's talking, and the rain's coming down, nobody's really bothered by it, you know, wind's coming through, it's winter ranger, you know, and freezing cold, we're at the position of attention, listen to the idiot talking to us in front of the formation. Rain's coming down. So I not only stand at attention and wait for the answer, but I stand at attention in the rain, in my imagination. Now, it's not raining water, it's raining grace. It's raining grace. Because it's the grace of God that gives us the strength to come out of, of a confining situation. It's the grace of God that, that gives us the, the understanding and the awareness that God is in control and he's leading us to go and come wherever we're supposed to go. So I stand at attention in the rain as the grace comes down. Now I'm told by mental health professionals, clinicians, that statistically, when people are in stressful situations, stress causes, causes trauma, and tra trauma causes all kinds of symptoms. People who have a devout faith in God sustain themselves through that trauma at a much better rate than people who don't. Now that's not a religious thing out of the Bible, that's just statistically proven. And so I'm urging you that in these times when it's uncertain, you know, when you feel powerless, that you increase your devotion to the Lord Jesus Christ and let him rain that grace down and give you the power to sustain through that. So to make a long story short here, you don't really hear the directions because the next thing you know, you know, you've got Joshua standing in front of this uh, commander of the host of God, of uh, the army of God, which is Jesus Christ. He's standing there. He asks him a question. What does my Lord have to say to his servant? The next thing you know, he is attacking Jericho with 50,000 of his soldiers and with the Levites marching before him, blowing the horns and all doing this crazy stuff, doing the craziest strategy that you could possibly do. No weapons, no siege equipment. So what has happened when he asked God that question was God gave him the strategy. <laughs> Crazy strategy. Once a day, march around for six days. Then go, go to your camp, march around, do it again, repeat, repeat. On the seventh day, you march around seven times. You blow the horns, you smash all this stuff, and you shout praises to God in the walls of Jericho, come tumbling down miraculously, and you wipe out the city. Certainties are gone. Powerlessness is gone. The victory actually belongs to God. So, what do you do? What do you do with your day when you feel confined or when you feel like you're um, powerless? Well, this is where you seek God. And you believe God for the fact that he can release you from any kind of confinement in your heart because that's where freedom comes from. Real freedom comes from. Real freedom. Look at Tozy. He's sitting in a wheelchair with no legs, and yet he has this positive attitude. When you ask him how he's doing, he says, better than most. And he means it. And he probably is <laughs> doing better than most. So that's our message for today. Here's one of the things that God says when you ask him that question, what does my Lord have to say to his servant? And you're trusting Jesus as the, as the most kind commander that could possibly be, the most thoughtful, the wisest, the smartest, the strongest commander that you could ever trust. This is the commandment that he gives you. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I love you. So that's the assignment. That's the assignment. That's the assignment that frees you. Because clinicians would also tell you that by helping other people <clears throat> and showing love toward other people, just you don't have to go crazy, just you know, have to go hugging people or just a smile, a touch, can I help you out? How you doing? That kind of association with people. You're giving to other people. And when you give to other people, it releases this, it triggers this stuff in your head that makes it better for you to get over all the
powerlessness and all the, the complaints and stuff like that. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. There's a lot more to this. We'll probably cover this command next week. There's, it sounds simple, but there's a lot to that. All right, so I'm gonna give the, the controls over the back to Valerie. Now this is a song that most of you are familiar with, but it has a little chorus in, the, in between. I'm in the key of C here, Catfish. And uh, if you wanna play, come on up to the drums, Bob. I always use that rhythm. So it's amazing grace, just like you've heard it before, but there's this chorus in between. I'm looking for my pick. And, and so most of you know Amazing Grace. You've heard it a hundred times, right? They played at bagpipes, at funerals and stuff. But then there's this chorus in between, and it goes, uh, my, go ahead and click it one time, and then we'll show it to you. These chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, his mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. So, can you go backwards? Look at that. Well done, Valerie. That's great. No rehearsals. You go back and forth. High tech. So, if you want to stand, you may stand. You can stay seated if you're more comfortable seating. Let's see, I think it's a good rhythm. Uh, so, let's see. Go catch me up here, Bob, a little bit.
set free. Amen? I've been set free. So let the blessing of God fill your hearts, your souls, your minds, and your strength, and let this strength bring you freedom when it just seems impossible. In the name of Jesus, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming. God bless you. This is the Chelsea Soldier Home Chapel, and we'll be on YouTube coming up.